we've talked a little bit about sales receipts and now let's talk a little bit about sending out invoices to your customers. Remember the difference in a sales receipt and an invoice is that on a sales receipt the customer is standing right there, you're going to put in the line item they purchased, you're going to put in they made a payment, the invoice is where you're going to send an invoice to your customer and wait for payment at a later date. Sometimes you email these, sometimes you mail them, really doesn't matter, you're going to receive the payment at a later date. Let me show you how to create invoices for your customers. It's very similar to the sales receipts, but I want to show you where to go to get started creating invoices. There are a couple different ways to get started creating an invoice. You're going to head over to the navigation pane and point to sales. You can either use the invoice option here or the customers. If you choose the invoices option here, you're going to see a list of all of your invoices that you currently have. And if you want to create a new one, you can choose new invoice from right here. If you started with the customers, you would just come back to sales and go to customers this way. Then what would happen is if you had a customer you wanted to create an invoice for, you could check them off, head all the way to the right under the action column, and then you can create an invoice this way. Either way would work, whatever works for you. You'll notice this way because I had a customer selected, it pulled in all that customer's information. Now if I wanted to change that, I just click the down arrow and choose the new customer from the list. Remember I told you that if you're using sub-customers, always, always, always pick the sub-customer. You want to go with the lowest level so that when you look at reports, you don't see other on your reports. I'm going to start with Freeman Sporting Goods. I'll choose 55 Twin Lane. And now you'll see it's changed the customer email and the billing address. If you didn't have an email set up in your customer setup, then you could physically type an email here. You can also choose to BCC or CC someone just by choosing this option and putting their email addresses in here. I'm going to hit cancel. You can also send this later. If you have this checked, that means that you can create this invoice and then save it and then create another one and check the same box. If you've done that, you can email both of them at the same time. That's called sending a batch or emailing a batch. If you happen to see that something's changed with the billing address, go ahead and change it here. It'll prompt you when you go to save it and ask you if you want to save this permanently in their record. Because we had terms of net 30 set up in the customer setup, you'll notice the invoice date is 212, but the due date is 313, which is 30 days from the invoice date. If I change this to net 10, you'll see the due date is 10 days. Just make sure the due date is the date that you want the invoice to actually be due to you. The crew number is a field they custom set up for this particular exercise. You can go ahead and plug in some number just to keep it consistent there. And then you can pick a product or service from the list to invoice your customer. I'm going to choose installation. And let's say that I'm going to charge them a quantity of one at $200. Remember a service is non-taxable, so you will not see a green check mark there. If you happen to see one, just uncheck it. And if you have a second line, you're just going to type on the second line whatever information you want to invoice the customer for. Here's where you have your message that will appear on your invoice automatically. You can type in there and change that to anything you like. Also, when you're sending out a statement to your customer, then you can have a message on that statement appear as well, whatever you typed in here. You'll notice that you can also put in an attachment. Let me scroll down just a little bit so you can see that. If you happen to have some sort of file that was already saved in your computer, you could attach it here. An example might be, if I'm installing landscape design, I might have hired a subcontractor to do that. And maybe the subcontractor has already sent me a bill, and I want to attach that to this invoice. Over on the right, if you're going to give your customer a discount, you can give them a percentage discount or a value discount. I'll choose value and give them $25 and you'll see it will deduct it from my 200 so now the balance due is 175 A couple things at the bottom you're going to be able to do, you can print or preview this right here. You can also make it recurring and what recurring means is if this is something that happens on a regular basis then you can set QuickBooks up to automatically just put this in whenever you've told it to. Let's say once a month it inserts this invoice automatically. 
And then you can customize this a little bit. If you want to do things like they added the crew number, you'd be able to add fields like that. At the bottom, you have an option that says save. You have your save and close. And if you wanted to create a new one, you could click the arrow and choose save and new. I'm going to choose a save and close though. And you'll see now that our invoice has been completed. If I wanted to go back and look at this, I can actually come up here to invoices. And then I can look down this list and find the one I'm looking for. And that's how you're going to create an invoice for a customer. Let's go ahead and move on into section four and I'll show you how to record the payment once a customer actually pays you. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there and click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.